Hey, hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, this video is going to be about integrating Google Maps into Ionic Framework. In this example, it's um, I'm using Vue.js for the sample app. I searched around for some Vue 3 compatible Google plugins, couldn't find many. And then I said, hey, let me see if I can make this work. And as it turns out, it's really not as hard as I thought it was going to be. So um, sit back check it out make sure you click the subscribe button and leave some feedback if you really like this video all right let's get into the code so once again i'm starting off with the base uh, Vue.js uh, sample app you get from my attic framework um i need to let's let's start out by creating a component i'm going to call my component gmap and what i'm going to try to do is encapsulate everything you need to know about setting up um, your google map inside of here uh, so I used a template to get the basic template script and styles place set up. Um, uh, right now, let's create a ref for the actual Google map that I'm going to create. And then let's create a ref to get access to the div. Normally, you use a get element by ID, but we're going to use a Vue.js refs to get access to it. So uh, we need to basically initialize these guys. Uh, let's put some comments in there because comments are always helpful. So we know what's going on later when I look at the code. And then now let's go up and set the div. So basically what we want to do is we want to initialize a Google map. And this div that I'm creating is going to be the container that's going to hold it. We make sure you, you need to make sure you set the size of the map. Otherwise, nothing will show up. So I'm going to do that in the class below. I set the ref to my map div. And then uh, my map width is 100% and height is 300 pixels. Now let's go back over to home view. Inside of the home view, we need to import the component, my gmap component. Let's put the .vu on the end there, vue, excuse me, to make sure everybody's happy. And remember, we need to add all the imports or else you get really strange behavior with Ionic and view. So I've added my imports. Title set, um, and right here is where I'm gonna place uh, my new GMAP component. So it's gonna sit right there inside of the page. Um, let's make sure we have access to our consoles. So everything's right. And that, that all looks like it's good. So components loaded. Let's, let's remove this. We don't need any of this style stuff. Um, Cause the only styling is really gonna happen inside of the GMAP view component. All right. So let's put a background color so we can make sure that it's getting rendered right. All right, we know it's there. So that's, I'm just doing that for debugging purposes. Now let's get to the code. So there's this weird way you basically need to inject the Google script into the head of the uh, document. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna load it up in before mount. So before the component's actually mounted, we're gonna load the script. Um, so we're getting my key which I stored in the .env file. Then we are creating a script element. Then we're setting the attributes to the script element to be the actual uh, Google source library. Then we're setting defer, we're setting sync, and then we're appending it to the head. And what that'll do is that'll force it to get loaded. Okay, and then as you can see on the end of that script there's a callback called init map. And, and basically what'll happen is that will get called as soon as Google's done loading the script. And so that is when we want to start to um, set up all the appropriate attributes for the map. So i.e. make our call to Google to create the map instance and set the properties in a map instance. We cannot do it until it's initialized. And so that's why we have this init map. Um, and that function is, it should, well, let me fix that. It should be sitting on the window object. It's not part of my um, view component. All right. so. What will happen is the script will get loaded. Once the script is done loaded, it's going to call my function init map. And so in init map, now I'm going to use my reference that I created um, for the actual map. And then I'm going to create the Google map using the Google JavaScript API. Um, additional information on the Google JavaScript API will be included in the links below. So we are going to initialize the map and then we initialize it using the reference to the object, which I have stored in map div ref. Then we're going to set some specific attributes. 
the first one we're going to set is the type ID. So I think it's like hybrid, satellite, and a bunch of other things. Once again, those are all documented in the UI, and this is just kind of pure JavaScript stuff. Remember, we're going to encapsulate all the JavaScript stuff inside of this component so we can just kind of move it around and use it as if it was a plugin. Maybe I'll try to convert this to a plugin after we're all done. Um, so um, the Google object is sitting on the window object, so that's why I have to do the new window.google to um, get access to it. I went down the path of trying to include TypeScript in this and it started to get hairy, so I decided to just keep it simple for now. Um, what's going on? Looks like I cannot get my, cannot find my key. So let's see if I set up my environment right because it's, it's saying it's getting an invalid key error. I suspect it's an environment issue. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, let's set our zoom because it's complaining about the zoom. So we'll set a default zoom to eight. Uh, the hybrid. Well, yeah. Let's go see what's going on with this um, key. Because the key is supposed to be being loaded from the .env file. So let's see where it is. It looks like I've loaded the... I copied the .env file to the wrong place. It should not be in the source directory. It needs to be in the directory above that. So let's move it. And I'm probably going to have to reload this or rebuild. And it looks like I'm going to have to stop. I, I think I got to stop Ionic and run this guy again. It's in the right place, but it's still not finding it. So let's switch back out to my terminal. Let's stop Ionic serve and fire this guy up again and see if we get better results. Okay, so it's running again. What's going on? Hmm. Something still doesn't appear to be right. All right, let's go back and see if I'm setting my properties correctly. Um, type ID, zoom, map initialized. Let's try switching this from on before mount to on mounted. See if that makes a difference. Nope, that's not it. Maybe I need to add a few more of these uh, parameters that I have not included yet, like centered and blah, blah, blah. So let's see if uh, that'll make a difference. So um, what are we gonna add first? Let's add save default UI, which means don't show the zoom and all the other things. Um, Let's try centering this location since I'm based in Washington, D.C. I don't know these off the top of my head. I've, I've kind of saved these values from someplace else. So, oh no, actually, these are bad values. Let's put some, see if that'll, we'll, we'll get with that. All right, let's reload. Not quite yet. What is missing? What is missing? Hmm. Um, I think. There might actually be a typo. Oh, yeah, that was it. There was a typo around hybrid. I had extra quotes. Okay, so now we actually have the map showing, which is what primary objective of what we're trying to do. So kind of let's go through this again. We've set up our location for the map. We have our div wrap unmounted. We load our Google script. We've stored our um, API key in an environment file. Um, once the script is loaded, we call the init map function. And then in init map, we initialize our Google map. Uh, we're using hybrid type, we're setting our zoom, and we're disabling the default, and we're not disabling the UI. So, but for this to really be a helpful component, what you want to do is you want to be able to pass some properties in. So, um, let's set up some props. We're going to allow you to set up, um, pass in the type of map you want. We are going to allow you to pass in the zoom level. We are going to allow you to pass in the, yes, the zoom level is correct that. Uh, the, how you want the map center, just clearly, you want to be able to control that. Um, and then the ability to enable or disable the default UI. We're going to just set these as basic properties. Um, you might want to do some more when you take this uh, source code and create your own component, but let's just start out with those for now. Um, let's give our component a name. So when we're looking at it in the dev tools, we can see it properly. Well, GMAP seems like as good a name as any. Um, and now let's start to lay out the, um, the props. 
So we will kind of name them and then we'll define what type they're supposed to be so that we can get some sort of uh, validation errors generated from um, uh, the compiler when it attempts to run it. And also you can get some IntelliSense inside of um, view, sorry, inside of Visual Studio Code um, when you put in this, this type information. So for the center, we need a lat long, which is a number. Um, zoom clearly is a number. Uh, map default or map type is a string. You can find those in Google documentation. And what else do I gotta get? Uh, disable UI should be a Boolean. So let's add that. And I think let's let's check. I think that's all of this. Let's make sure we get our commas where they're supposed to be. Okay, um, looks good. Now let's go to home view and actually utilize them. So um, we will remember these variables are binded. So that's interpreting them with the when you have the colon next to disable UI. So it's looking for an actual Boolean value, which it will interpret. Um, so that's not right. Um, yeah. So no comma. Let's get that comma out of there. But we're going to set our zoom. And our zoom needs to default to a number. Let's get that comma out of there. And we're going to set our zoom level to 6. Let's reload it so you can see the see see how it got updated. So that means the property is getting in. Let's play with this a little bit more. Set it to a two. Kind of reload. Now we're way zoomed out. Um, nine. Probably getting a little carried away with this testing. Nine seems a little bit closer to what we want. Um, eight. Nah. Eight. Nine. It's it's. I need to look at the documentation a little bit more to see how much zoom you get out of the zoom. Uh, now let's set our uh, default type. Um, once again, documentation has these satellite, satellite roadmap, different types of views. The roadmap is kind of what you're all used to seeing when you use Google Maps uh, to find where you're going. Let's zoom this in a little bit more um, so that it will work out for us. Eight, let's put it to tw uh, 12 is a little, yeah, that looks okay. Okay, so now we have a roadmap and then are we going to try any more properties? Uh, yeah, let's center. And since we are in lovely Washington, D.C., let me cut and paste in the lat long for Washington, D.C. and see what we get. So, as you can see, I set the property here and it got updated in the component so we know that our properties are getting passed in. So, now let's uh, get to the fun stuff. So I normally talk about Ionic Capacitor with my projects. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the app you just saw running in a browser. And uh, we are going to run it on an iOS device. So I started out by Ionic Capacitor add iOS. So I'm adding all the iOS dependencies to my project so that I can compile this thing and deploy it on a device. For now, we're just gonna run it in the simulator, but the same thing, you can follow a similar process to actually deploy it to your device. So now we're gonna type Ionic Cap Run iOS, which will package everything up nice and neatly, sync it over, sync over the essential files to the project, and then launch um, Xcode, which is the iOS IDE. I'm cutting some of the loading time out so you guys can just see it working and not sit here and watch it loading. But the reality is what, actually not the reality, what we're shooting for here is just to let you guys know that it's pretty straightforward to take your web application and embed it into a mobile application. So in this scenario here, I'm just using an old um, iPad simulator that I have, but um, you can see the app's launching and soon it should render. Let's go. And there we have our app now running inside a container on a mobile device. And you're just kind of dragging it around. Um, the second part is video. I'm gonna add markers and show you how you ha can have access to other parts of the Google API. But for now, you can see it running in iOS. And since I normally do iOS, this time I threw in, we're gonna deploy this thing on Android also. Same as before, Ionic Cap run Android. It's noticing that it doesn't have Android, so it's going to add the Android dependencies. 
it's setting up the project and then it's going to start to build well first of all it's rebuilding the um, web components and then now it's going to fire up android studio for me and drop me right into the project this uh, just to give you a heads up the initial build on android is very very slow gradle's got to download everything get all set but after that it'll be much 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 quicker just like on the android build i'm kind of phasing some of this out so you don't have to watch it all let's jump to the app being actually deployed on the uh, pixel emulator so we got this link thing loading up right now we should see the same behavior as we saw on ios uh, the application is loading let's see our map view come on um yep we have our map view so once again you saw the same code base just added capacitor it's up and running our map's running fine got the locations all the power of google maps in there without the native component just a couple of lines of code we had to make to get our initial component going um and then now let's just to show you how easy it is to make changes and kind of the the dev cycle and i'm not even using live reload in the next video i'll show you live reload but here i'm making a change and i'm just going to run out of cap run android it'll rebuild the website so that's what it's doing right now the website's rebuild it's, now it's synced it over to the android project and i just rerun the android project and it's loading the whole thing up and as you can see we have a, we now have the uh the um, ui tool showing inside the google map but that's really the end of this part the next part we will show how to integrate map markers we will load in some geolocation and we'll probably also add in some additional tools to show you how you can get access to google services in the project if you made it this far along please make sure you like and subscribe i hope you enjoyed the content please leave suggestions below thanks a lot have a good one bye